This is The Real Hustle on Holiday. In this series, Alex, Jess and Paul expose to our hidden cameras the scams that cheat tourists and travellers out of their hard-earned holiday money. On tonight's show, how one hour's parking could cost you your life savings. DJ Christian O'Connell gets emotional over a lost tenor. I am the verge of crying. And why hotel guests shouldn't trust this nice man in a suit. Oh my <laughs> sake. All the people on this show have been hustled for real. And after being given their money back, they agreed that the footage could be shown so you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams. When you're on holiday, you may think twice about carrying around high-end cameras or expensive jewelry. But you may not realize that you're still carrying around something else of great value to hustlers your identity. This is the passport coolout. Paul has come to this tourist spot outside Malaga Cathedral in Spain. Along with his fellow hustlers, he's going to steal the passports from these American holidaymakers. But not by picking their pockets. The hustlers are going to make them hand their passports over of their own free will. So how will they do it? First, Paul sends a text to Alex and Jess, who are waiting for his signal. In many countries, you must always carry ID, like a passport, and can be spot-checked by the authorities at any time. But do you know exactly what the police look like when you're on holiday? Okay. Sometimes, all it takes is a blue jacket and a walkie-talkie to look the part and a convincing accent. Can I see your passport, please? Yeah. I also need to see your passport, if you're in Of course, Alex isn't radioing police headquarters. He's actually talking to Jess, who's just out of sight in the car. Hola, oh, sorry, just on? some report. We're just doing some check. One of the girls hands over her passport even before Paul can get his one out as a convincer. You have a passport? Stolen passports can be used for identity theft, illegal immigration, even terrorism. So it's no wonder they fetch considerable sums on the black market. Alex now has two genuine passports in his hands, and he's not planning to give them back. Hola. Hola. There seems to be a problem with his radio. One moment, I have to check uh, the radio in the car. Hola. See. It's a real pain, you've got to carry your passport everywhere here. And they don't... Whilst Paul keeps the marks talking, Alex is in his car and gone. <laughs> By the time they realise what's happened, it's too late. The last thing the hustlers want now is for the girls to phone the real police. Uh, me, I'm a, uh, so Paul beats them to it. Uh, uh, yes, yes, I speak English, thank you. A police officer just came up to us and he asked for our passports and then got in a car and drove away. Yeah, like, what, two minutes ago? He says he's been called around the corner and he's coming right back. He just got called on a... What? Yeah, it, they said that they've got something going on nearby and they called everybody and... He's responded to say that he has three passports. I'm guessing they're ours. All right, well... Okay. Yeah, that's my number. All right. He doesn't speak very good English, but basically, it take about 10 minutes. He's gone around. If somebody's stolen something, who I guess looks like us. Likely story, but the fake phone call has bought the hostlers a little more time. Now, all Paul has to do is disappear without arousing suspicion. 
Can you look after that for just a second? Okay, I'll go walk around. He said it's just around the corner. Okay. I'm just going to have a look and come back. As proof that he's coming back, he leaves his book with the marks. He'd finish reading it anyway. Before long, it dawns on the marks that Paul, the policeman and the passports won't be coming back. We think some people just stole our passport. It's I like, I can't yeah. believe it happened. It just it seems so they, surreal. It was like a Spanish police officer, and he came up to us and asked for a passport, which we thought was normal because we've heard that they do that, like check foreigners, and now we don't have our passport. When you're in panic, you're just vulnerable, yeah. super vulnerable. This is a really clever use of social compliance, and there are two techniques at work here. First of all, when asked to do something by the police, most people do as they're told. But remember, in a foreign country, you may not know what the police uniform looks like exactly. And if someone else is there confirming that everything appears to be legitimate, then you tend to follow along. And that's what's the core of this scam. Some countries require you to carry your ID at all times, but you should avoid carrying your passport and always check the credentials of anybody claiming to be from the authorities. If they are genuine, then they won't mind verifying this for you. Passports can be abused in many, many ways. They can be falsified, they can have photos substituted, they can be copied, uh, numbers can be taken, they can swap. There's a, a variety of uh, ways they can be used, and basically it's identity theft. They do get stolen, so please be very careful. How are you? Nice to see you. Money won is twice as sweet as money earned. Might as well say goodbye now. And money won from a celebrity is even sweeter. I am the verge of crying. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Let's see if you can do it. In the celebrity con games. This week, the hustlers are paying a visit to the Absolute Radio Studios in central London. They're here to take on Sony Award-winning breakfast show host, Christian O'Connell. Hello. Hi. They meet him in the radio station bar after his show, planning to relieve him of some of his hard-earned showbiz wages. You ever been conned? Um, yes, I've been married for 10 years, so every day. Oh. But you never had, like, uh, someone trying to sell you speakers out of a white van or... You oh, know, yeah, yeah, I bought a uh, stereo at a car boot sale. How was that? Never get an electrical item at a car boot sale. Where did you okay. take it back? Back to a field. It's gone. I paid £25 for it, got it home, and it was just full of sand in the back. <laughs> it was the most expensive sand you could ever buy. £25 yeah, yeah, of sand. sand. Yeah. Mm. Time for Alex to throw down the challenge. So, now, look, we've got you down here for a serious reason. Uh, it's all for ten pounds. <laughs> see, see the money. Let's see the money. We got the money, sweetheart. Or even the uh, money. There you go. Okay. Give the money to Jess, actually, because she, she's she's, she's our. She, she, she always gets the money. Yeah. She always gets the money. So what what we've got here is uh, just some random bits that we got from around the office. We found some trim, got some matches. I think. And it's a very simple challenge. Uh, you have to lift this table without touching it. Now there are a few rules. Um, you can't put anything underneath it to help you lift it. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of these mugs, whichever one you want, has to remain on the table. That's to make sure you don't tip it over or anything. And the rest get, of the stuff can go. The rest of the stuff can go, you can use it. I mean, I can tell you that, you know, you need some of the stuff that's on the table in order to do this. I mean, I saw something similar to this when I used to watch MacGyver. Oh, so... no, we've got a MacGyver oh, watcher. Yeah. Oh, we're busted. You <laughs> picked the wrong busted. guy oh, for no. this, trust me. Why have you given me such a difficult one? Well, where's the pee in the cup? That's what I was hoping for. That's harder. It seems like an impossible task, but Christian isn't ready to throw in the towel. Any ideas? I mean... Can I use the string and just uh, make like a cat's cradle and suspend that? Yeah, only you can't attach or put anything underneath the table. I can't put anything underneath it? No. Well, how am I supposed to lift it? Could I turn the table upside down and no. attach the something? No, because remember, you can't top. touch the table. And the mug has to be on the top. Could to stay there. I give you the apple and you do it? You lift the table and you get this apple as a reward. You're not allowed to delegate it, you have to do it yourself. Oh, crikey. That's, that's actually pretty good. That's yeah, a do you like that? Idea. Yeah? Could I create a <laughs> make a hot do? air balloon? Um, <laughs> what are the matches here for? Anytime you want to give up, by the way, and just kiss goodbye to that tenor. No, because then know. I could see you're all smugly looking at me. Like, there's no <laughs> yeah. way. There's no way this thick breakfast show DJ's going to be able to do it. I don't want to prove you guys right. <laughs> yeah. I am on the verge of crying. 
So I've got to use devil's magic now. Oh. oh. Yeah, see, I want to. <laughs> uh, I've got no idea. Do you want me to show you? Yes, go on then. He's finally run out of ideas and the table hasn't moved an inch. You'll like this because you're... Over to the professional. Okay. So I'm going to use pretty much everything that's on the table. I'm going to use the apple by taking it off the table and therefore reducing the weight. So I'm using it. Um, no same goes for the paper clips. Sorry. The glue's gone, there's no need for it. This... Too heavy, can't use it. Oh, not... that's not fair, Nothing come on. It. What I am going to use is... I'll show you. I'm going to wet these napkins. The trick seems to involve some soggy napkins. Christian is still baffled. OK, Paul, can I ruin your tea? Mm. Lovely. Any idea? No. <laughs> Good. Ready? Lifting the table. Come on. Without touching it. And the mug staying on the table. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. That is a fantastic trick. That's oh! <laughs> there you go. I'm lifting. genuinely impressed. That was brilliant. So Alex wet the napkins to form an airtight seal against the table. And the matches burnt up all the oxygen in the cup creating a strong enough vacuum to take the weight of the table. That's another celebrity tenor for the Hustlers bank account. Great sport, thank you very much. Great trick. Thank you so much. Of course, I knew that really, I just didn't want to read yeah. 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 it. So I've done this so very, many yeah. times. <laughs> when you're on holiday, you don't want to worry about your home being burgled while you're gone. Here are some tips to keep your house and possessions safe. Obviously, you should fit an alarm with a code known only to you and people that you trust. Another tip is to get to know one of your neighbours so that you can look after each other's property when you're away. Now, you probably know about electronic timers that plug into the wall, but there are other devices too. Here's an example. This is something that can plug directly into a light socket. You put the bulb in here, and at dusk, it switches on automatically for a given period of time, which you program here. And finally, cancel the milk and don't tell the taxi driver who picks you up how long you're going to be away or that there's nobody home. This is the seaside town of Bournemouth. When the sun's out, people flock to the beach in droves every day. But with this many sunbathers coming out all at once, parking spaces near the seafront are at a premium. This is the seaside parking swindle. Jess has come to a busy cliff-top parking area right above the beach. But the parking instructions seem a little confusing. Maybe the occupants of this arriving car can help her make sense of them. Are you parking here? Yeah, do you know how this works? I've heard of it before. I've heard of it, but I've never actually done it. In fact, with this hot weather, Helpful motorists turn up all day long. Excuse me, are you parking here? Yeah, we are. Would you be able to help me with this? I'm not really too sure. I don't know if you've done it before, what I'm doing. You have to pay with your phone? Yeah. Do you know how this works? Uh, no, I've never seen it before. You, you just have to text it in. The signs along this road state that this is a pay-by-text zone, a new parking concept that is springing up all over the country. Yeah, it's all the way around here. There's someone who's got a ticket up there that I saw when I came down. Motorists need to pay for their parking by sending a text with their details to the local authority. I think it goes, it actually goes through to the council to say, to register. Yeah, that is That they've started to do. This complete stranger seems to be familiar with this type of payment scheme, having used it elsewhere. The parking lot, so you just have to do that, don't you? Hang on, I'm going to find a car. Where from? <laughs> 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 Not wanting to get parking tickets, Jess and the motorists start writing their text to the local council. Create message, yes? yes. First of all, it's the parking zone number. Uh, so the parking location is that, that seven, eight dots here, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Next, how long they plan on staying. And then you just put how many hours you're here for, don't you? I think so, yeah. And the car registration. You need to put your number plate. 
I know, I know. So what about the payment? For that, they'll need some plastic. Now what? Now it's your name on the card. And then credit slash switch card number. So that's the long one there. Now what? Uh, expiry date. Do you know what the three-digit security thing is? Yeah, that'd be that one. Oh, the last three? Oh, right. So, what's really going on? Why is Jess standing here all day making sure motorists follow instructions on the parking signs? Because they were all put here by the hostlers. Alex, Paul and Jess visited this beachfront road just after sunrise earlier that day. As any local resident would know, parking is actually free here. But the signs the hostlers put up were designed to trick any visitors or tourists into thinking they had to pay one pound an hour for the privilege. Jess even added a touch of authenticity by handing out some parking fines. And that number on the signs was nothing to do with the local council. It went straight to a mobile belonging to the hostlers. The marks thought that they were only paying one pound an hour for their parking. But they actually texted their names, credit card numbers, expiry dates and security codes directly to the hostlers. Everything criminals need to clean out a bank account. It's a clever way of paying, isn't it? Yeah. Send. Please wait. Message sent. Message sent. <gasps> Perfect. Brilliant. Have you sent yours? Yeah. Has it gone through? Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Cheers. Then take care. Don't be daft, it's fine. It's more than fine. The marks head for the beach, happy that the parking fee is money well spent. It would have been cheaper to get a ticket. So what did the marks make of the new parking scheme? We didn't quite understand the new system they got up there. We had to use our mobile phone. You've got to enter in your, enter in your car number and then put your, put your credit card number in it as well. I suppose you, you just trust it really, don't you? A good afternoon is about to turn sour when the marks are handed their full credit card details on a slip of paper. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've just been completely sharp. I think what happens is when you come to park, you're too frightened not to, you're frightened to get a ticket, and you do it because you, we were under pressure. So I think you, a lot of people could be done with that. It's <gasps> terrible, isn't it? This is really a very simple scam to pull off. It takes advantage of the fact that most of us don't pay much attention when paying for something like parking. Most of us will simply follow the instructions and then go on our way. And remember, this will target tourists because they won't be able to recognize what a proper sign looks like. But a clever con artist will make sure that their signs look exactly like the real thing. Always be cautious when handing over your credit card details. Make sure you know where those details are gonna end up. So if you're unsure, call the local council, find out, and proceed. When on holiday, it doesn't get much better than relaxing in the sun with a drink in your hand. Except if that drink is free. The hostlers are going to show you how to win drinks from your mates by using proposition bets. The prop bet makes you believe you're onto a sure thing. But of course, the hostlers always have the edge, and you don't stand a chance. So watch and learn. I will have a gin and tonic, please. Jess is out for a drink in a seaside bar, but she doesn't plan on picking up the tab. So when you not go out, that's how you dress? Well... What are you dressed yeah. for right now? Just going out. Yeah? Cash. And do you always wear a tie? <laughs> not always, no. Do you mind taking your tie off? <laughs> but you don't get many girls asking you to take it off, do you? Loads. Really? Thank you. I've got um, I've got a really good trick with a tie. Do you want to see it? Fine. It's a challenge. Fine. I want you to take one hand at the end of the tie, the other hand on the other end. Without letting go, I want you to tie a knot right in the middle. So, in the end, it's going to look just like that. Without letting go? Without letting go. Right. How many knots do you want? How many knots can you give me? I'll be impressed if you do one. All right. But if you can do two, then go for it. OK. OK. Tie knot. What's that? Right, you got it. No, a knot. OK, there. OK, OK. A knot and a knot. OK, OK, that's fine. Are you got tea? Um, if you want. Can you use mine? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. 
no, that, that, well, that was cheating because you grabbed the end, you grabbed yeah, another end, it, it? and it didn't work it's anyway. Both both not. You know what? I don't think you can do it. Okay, if I can do it, how about you buy me a drink? I'd love to. You'd love to buy me a drink yes. if I can do it. You can't let go. Can't let go. All right. Okay, so I'm going to have one hand like you did, and the other like you did. <laughs> I'm not going to let go. Okay, sure. There is your. Uh, Not. <laughs> I will have a gin and tonic, please. It's simple. Jess started with her arms crossed and picked up each end of the tie. Then she uncrossed her arms to produce the knot and a free drink. Was that, was that, was that, was that, was that, was that what your second you, choice, was it? Do you want your tie back? <laughs> <laughs> Alex has come to this busy four-star hotel, but he's not checking in. In fact, he's heading straight upstairs without going anywhere near the reception desk. He's here to carry out the swipe. Alex makes straight for a room on the 10th floor. And like any genuine guest, he's got a magnetic keycard to open the electronic lock. But this isn't his room. He's about to tidy up in a way that housekeeping never would, by removing all the guest's valuables. This case will come in handy. It's the perfect size for a brand new laptop. The occupants of this room have also been kind enough to leave a wallet lying around, full of credit cards and cash. Happy that he's found everything worth taking, Alex leaves. Not a bad haul, but Alex isn't done yet. There are plenty more rooms in this hotel. Once again, he lets himself in with a key. Even more goodies in this room. But he needs to move fast. Every second that he's in the room could spell disaster. He could be discovered either by hotel staff or, worse still, by the room's occupants. Time to head back to the lifts and make a sharp exit with over two and a half thousand pounds worth of other people's stuff. So how did Alex know which rooms were empty? And how was he able to beat the electronic door locks? To find out, we need to rewind. Alex had already been to this floor earlier in the day, wearing the same suit, but with one crucial difference. And this time, he was knocking on doors rather than opening them himself. Oh, hi there. Sorry to disturb. We seem to be having a problem with our key cards. I just need to run it through a few times, reprogram it for your lock. Oh, OK. It's fine. Thank you. Alex was carrying a standard notebook computer with an added extra, a magnetic card reader. That should be fine now. OK. Thank you. Enjoy, enjoy your stay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Just one swipe and he had all the keys data. To make the scam worth his while, Alex needed a number of rooms to rob. So he carried on down the hallway, knocking on every door. Hi there. Hello. Sorry to disturb. We're having a little bit of a problem with our key cards. All I need to do is swipe it and reprogram it for you. There you go. Having problems with key cards. There you go. That's fine. Thank you. You're fine. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hi there. We seem to be having a problem with our key cards. None of the guests thought twice about handing over their keys to the man with a the badge. They might as well just have handed over their belongings. Down in the hotel bar, Alex immediately set about making use of the keycard data he'd collected. A clever piece of software transformed a handful of blank high street gift cards into exact clones of the hotel room keys. Once he jotted the correct room number onto each card, 
All he had to do was keep an eye on the exit and wait. Hotel guests don't stay in their rooms 24 hours a day. In fact, during the daytime, most rooms are empty most of the time, while the guests are out going about their business. And Alex didn't have to wait long to recognize some of the guests he'd called on earlier on their way out. He matched the faces to the room numbers, and once he knew a couple were vacant, he headed back upstairs. And whilst the Macs were out enjoying themselves, Alex broke into their rooms, stealing all their valuables. 20 minutes later, the guest that never checked in, checked out. The unfortunate guests returned to the hotel at different times, but they all had the same nasty surprise waiting for them. Where did you put my purse? I didn't have it. Can I take it with me? Where's our laptop? Where's my laptop? Where's my laptop? Are you kidding me? Oh, don't do this. Wait, did I take my purse? No, I'm, I'm no, not joking. I didn't. What the f Check into the... Are you joking? Check. Um, it's got everything in. Hang on, let me try your phone. Does it do you think they need a Oh my god! Are you kidding me? I left my phone here. Oh my sake! We caught up with both sets of guests to get their reactions. We just came in and I just looked for my purse and it wasn't here. We've just come back and my laptop and stuff's gone. My phone, iPod, my laptop. It's got everything in, all my credit cards, my work ID. It's got everything in. It's a quality hotel, so I didn't really expect this to happen. If you are taking valuables when you travel, it's important to protect them at all times. But most importantly, protect your keys. Particularly with electronic keys, these can be copied easily and shouldn't be handed to anybody, even if they appear to work for the hotel. Whenever you're staying in a hotel, if you get asked by somebody for your key card or for your PIN number, always check with reception. Be absolutely certain you're speaking to a bona fide member of staff. It's just too easy for a con man to walk into a hotel, look smart and pretend to be a member of staff and get access to your room. It's market day in the Spanish holiday town of Fengirola. Holiday makers and locals are out to catch some rays and find themselves a bargain. And this morning, there's a new bric-a-brac stall in the market, run by Paul. His prices might look fair, but in actual fact, anything from this stall will cost unwary tourists a lot more than they realize. This is the counterfeit con. Paul's eye-catching display is attracting plenty of interest. So it shouldn't be long before he can persuade someone to hand over their cash. Good morning. Hi, yeah. oh, look. These holiday makers are interested in Paul's antique spoons, so he shows off his expert knowledge. I think it's from uh, kind of like a jubilee thing. I'll probably do that one for 10. 10? Yeah. This is a very nice one here as well. Again, I can do that one for 10 for you. I can do three for 20. Mommy says that I have to pay for the imagination. You do? Yeah, it looks like a dragon. I'll do you four for 20 so long as the little girl gets hers. How's that? Oh. How's that? Do you want that one? What a softie. Yeah. I'm, too, I'm too kind. <laughs> and who could deny the little girl her souvenir? 20 euros, please. Out comes the cash. Paul's taking a closer look at that note. He carries out a check with his counterfeit note pen. I'm sorry, that one's that. We've been told to look out for these. So if it makes a mark like that. The news isn't good. It's a fake. 
you have another one? The marks are naturally embarrassed having tried to spend a dodgy 20. So they immediately get out a different note. Yeah, I feel like I'll show you. Always willing to help a tourist, Paul shows them how to tell the difference between a real note and the fake. You can tell that they look, they look almost exactly the same. This one's just a little bit darker, yeah, see yeah, that? Yeah. And it's also not exactly the same size. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Sorry about that. So the bad news is that they've tried to pass off a dodgy note. Welcome. But the good news is that they've got themselves a great bargain. Uh, they've paid just 20 euros for a set of four collectible spoons. Or have they? Let's go back and take a closer look at the transaction. After Paul received the original 20 euros from the mark, it wasn't just his security pen he took from the van. He also switched the perfectly good note for a fake one that was hidden inside. With the real 20 euros safely in his van, it was his own note that he tested. As it was a fake, the pen brought up a bright blue mark on the paper. The customer had no reason to suspect his note had been switched and handed over another 20 euros to pay for the spoons. So, rather than getting themselves a bargain, the marks actually paid double and unwittingly lumbered themselves with a forged banknote in the process. We told the marks that their note was good all along. No. Oh. You mean he did a switch? No, he couldn't. No, I gave it to him and he did it with a pen. You know, <laughs> he couldn't have, you know, I mean, I would have seen a switch, wouldn't I? I might have done. I'm an East Ender and I never thought I could get scammed. This scam works very well because of the massive embarrassment factor. If you accuse somebody of handing you over a fake note and they're a foreigner in that country, and also they don't know what to look for, then it becomes very, very difficult for them to stand up and fight for their rights. Always familiarize yourself with the local currency when you're abroad, and always check the authenticity of any notes when you receive one or hand one over. There is a risk of you being passed a fake note, particularly as a tourist if you're not familiar with the currency. Um, but that's a risk you have to take in most countries, I think. It's not just in Spain. If you do get handed a fake note, I'm afraid there's not much you can do about it, apart from complain to the police, if you can identify the shop or the place where you got it from. When on holiday, it doesn't get much better than relaxing in the sun with a drink in your hand, except if that drink is free. The hostlers are going to show you how to win drinks from your mates by using proposition bets. The prop bet makes you believe you're onto a sure thing. But of course, the hostlers always have the edge, and you don't stand a chance. So watch and learn. I will have a gin and tonic, please. Alex is out for a drink in a Spanish seaside bar, but he's not planning to spend any of his own money. Here's the bet. It's for a round of drinks. So it could be a costly bet. No, I'm kidding, look. I propose that I can make this glass spin twice on itself, yeah? With one hand, but without letting go. I don't want to spill anything, so you'll see the lemon go, uno, dos, okay? Round itself. It's gonna be off the table, you can hold it in one hand and one grip. You can't use two hands to go like that, OK? And you can't do silly things like hold it and then go like that, because that's not spinning around itself, it's just spinning around you. Yeah. You can't put it on the table and sort of walk around the table, right? You're going to be holding in your hand, and you've got to spin it around. Twice. I'll tell you what, we'll do it for two rounds of drinks, because you're doing it twice. <laughs> and, you know, we're on holiday. <laughs> Any ideas? I don't want to go because I've got the glass. <laughs> what are you going to do with it? You've got an you idea, haven't you? I'm trying to... I'll drop it. Why are you going to drop it? <laughs> oh, you're trying to do it with your fingers? <laughs> yeah, you will drop That's it. That's what I was going to do. The lemon's going to spin round. So you're going to make the glass... Lemon. No. <laughs> Not allowed to put your finger in my drink either. <laughs> Can I do it like that? No, you can't. You're letting go of the glass. You've got to hold, hold on to the glass. 
Oh, you see, you're, you're moving it around in your fingers. You've got to hold the glass and make a spin. I can't do it differently. If I can do it, would you buy me a drink? Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Right, so here we go. Starts here. Uh-huh. Watch the lemon. Not me, just the lemon. <laughs> ready? Well, yeah, that's one. Yeah. Twice. <laughs> Two rounds of drinks, please. Thank you. Pass that way. It's all in the wrist. Alex rotated the glass once under his elbow and continued the motion, giving it one more rotation above the elbow, being careful not to spill his drink in the process. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I can't show. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Still to come, Jess is feeling a little flat. Do you know how to change a tyre by any chance? Lucky tickets. And Alex puts the unfair into fun fair. We need to get three more. If you're planning a holiday this year and don't want to run into any hustlers, Here's some essential advice to get you on your way. You're never more likely to be conned than when traveling. So here's a few common sense tips if you're traveling abroad, particularly about documents. The most important document, of course, would be your passport. A lot of countries ask you to carry your passport at all times, but that can be very dangerous because if you are robbed, you'll lose that as well as your money. I would recommend keeping it in the hotel, in the hotel room safe or in the safe downstairs, and carrying a photocopy and some other form of identification, such as a driving license. You also want to be very careful with your insurance documents. In fact, anything that contains your private information. Make sure that you take photocopies of all of these important documents and keep those in a separate place from the originals. So just in case the worst happens, at least you can show people what the replacement should look like. These are the historic docks in Liverpool. Jess is in one of the main marina car parks, and it looks like she's in a spot of bother. She has a flat tire. And though she's managed to jack the car up, she has no idea what to do next. What she needs is someone to give her a helping hand. This is the Good Samaritan scam. Hopefully the occupants of this car will be the kind of people who don't mind helping a complete stranger. Excuse me. Hiya. Do you know how to change a tyre by any chance? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Could you help me, please? I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. I managed to jack it up and that's about it. You how you the scam is on. Okay, so you know Their willingness to do a good deed has just made these motorists the marks. Jacked it up properly, is it um, off the ground? I guess so, yeah. I'm not, yeah. I'm not really know how to do these things. <laughs> is it not? Do you need no. to do that? Yeah. After standing here so long in the cold sea breeze, Jess is naturally feeling the chill. So she has one more favour to ask of her new friends. It's freezing. So can I be really, really cheeky? I've just seen you come in. Has your car got a heater in it? Yeah, yeah. Do you mind if I just go quickly sit in it and make a phone call? I'm right with is it. that okay? Yeah. I'm absolutely freezing. Thank you. Well, I can just watch, watch what you're doing. Oh, thank you. Need... Of course, she can't run the heater without the car keys. Thank you very much. Just that green one over there. Thank you. I'll be two seconds. I can go for my dad. Being a gent, the Mark does the honourable thing and lets Jess wait in his car to warm up. Though he's keeping a good eye on the damsel in distress, and his car, while his girlfriend gets her hands dirty. But the moment his back is turned, this good deed goes bad. Before he realises what's happened, the Mark's car is gone. And he's not happy. So why has Jess stolen his wheels, leaving her own perfectly good car behind? 
because it was never her car to start with. Let's take a look at what really happened. Jess wasn't working alone. This was a three hustler scam. The hustlers arrived and pulled up by a parked car. They'd come prepared with all the tools they needed. The cheapest spare tire and jack money could buy. Alex jacked up the car and let the air out of a front tire. With the man work done, it was time for Jess to step in and play her role as the damsel in distress. Alex and Paul then pulled up across the car park where they could keep an eye on proceedings and waited. Thank you. I'll be two seconds. I can go for my dad. Once Jess had secured some marks and persuaded them to hand over their car keys, Alex and Paul made their moves. Jess got into the marked passenger seat and put the keys in the ignition. Alex also headed over to the car, but timing was critical. He had to wait for Paul to pull up right in front of the marks in the hustler's van. For a matter of seconds, the van completely blocked the marks' view of his car. Long enough for Alex to jump in the driver's seat and disappear. Followed shortly afterwards by Paul. But the Mark's troubles aren't over yet. They have some explaining to do to the real owners of the broken down car. Who return to find their vehicle with its wheel in the air. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Have they pinched my wheels and put different wheels on? No, 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 we, we, no started, this, we were doing that. She, she, came, she came over This nice like, pretty lady came along and said, oh, do you mind just changing the uh, wheel of my car? She and said, can I come over here and check and sit in your car for a while? She was freezing, really, standing really, really out here. How do I get that back down to drive? She was a bit cold, so she was uh, wanting to get my car just to warm up for a bit. I thought it would be all right, but I am not. It was horrible because I've only just had it about two weeks. I thought it's um, trying to get off with my lovely little car. I think I looked down to try and take another thing off the, the wheel, and then she had driven, driven off in the car. Yeah. This scam plays on the Mark's good nature, and a damsel in distress is an excellent way to get a hold of someone's car keys. Now, we would never advocate not helping somebody when they're in distress, but always take account of the situation first before you get involved. In our case, we had people handing over their car keys to someone they had met 10 seconds ago. It's really not a very smart thing to do. How are you? Nice to see you. Money won is twice as sweet as money earned. You might as well say goodbye now. And money won from a celebrity is even sweeter. I am the verge of crying. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Let's see if you can do it. In the Celebrity Kong Games. This week, the hustlers are going to do battle with Atomic Kitten, TV presenter, and winner of Celebrity MasterChef, Liz McLaren. Have you ever been conned or hustled before? No, I, think, I think I'm a bit suspicious. I'm always a bit Are you? suspicious, yeah. yeah. Good, this will be good. I'm intrigued. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all right. What can we possibly what be asking you to do? No, not not cooking anything, obviously. Is it some kind of electrical experiment or something? Um, there is £10 involved. I knew there'd be money involved. There'd be money involved. Uh, hey, I mean, you know. Yeah. Do you have any change? Chris Brown. Just a, just a ten pound note. Just a ten. Just and it's real. There's Liz's tenner, but for this challenge, she's going to need some smaller change. There we go. There's five and five. So we've got well, ten pounds. Ten pounds. Five plus five. It takes me a while. It's early. Do you uh, do you have a good end fair? Carnival. Yeah. Play any of the games? Yeah. This is a carnival game. Oh, okay. But it's also the kind of scam someone would make up and play in a bar, but in a very, very dodgy bar. Okay. okay. Yeah, so time for Paul to explain exactly how this carnival game works. Okay, this is for you, this is kind of the rock and roll fork. Okay. okay. <laughs> and uh, we've got a bottle, and it's very, very simple. All you have to do, using the fork and not your fingers, 
this groove, this groove here, mm. this, these just happen to fit right into that groove. And that's what, what you need to use, that's the secret, okay? You go under and you get to use a delicate touch. Oh. Oh. You nearly oh. voiced there. So, oh. so uh, I did a little it, it can bit. be done. So Liz has to use the fork to stand the bottle upright without it toppling over. Looks simple. Not only that, she has 10 goes to get it right. One for each pound coin. I know it's going to be the kiss of death, but it looks easy, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. The problem is, there is money on the line. OK. <laughs> Scared? <laughs> Use the fork, Liz. Okay. Careful, it'll want to roll around, so try and stop it. OK. See, incidentally, see these lines? Oh. See these lines? Yeah. If you go over these lines, you lose. Oh! See? Did I forget to mention that? Yes! Oh, it's not as easy as it looks. One pound down, nine to go. Uh, yeah, I'm back. This is moving, it won't do anything. Ah! Oh, <laughs> not... It's blooming hard! It is hard, yeah, it is hard. So, have another go, just to see if it's Ooh, that was quick. Oh, oh. Oh. That was close. Oh. That was a pound, by the way. You can cover it. I see what the problem is. It's rolling to the side, and you're going to keep going over these lines, you're going to keep losing. So to help you out, I'm going to support the bottom with two other bottoms. OK. <laughs> so, thumb please. Surely now Liz will be able to do it. Oh. Oh. Or maybe not. Three pounds. Oh. 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 So Almost. <laughs> Definitely will be worth another go. Slow down. Oh. 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 Right. A bit slow at the end. Last go. Oh. 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 Last go. So it's just a little bit slower. It's the last chance for Liz to win that tenner. I'm nervous. I'm so I don't know about you. I'm but just annoyed now. I'm just annoyed. <laughs> oh. Oh. It's no good. She's bottled it. You lose. I'm not going out tonight. No. You're not going out tonight. Actually, she never had a chance in the first place. And here's why. The secret's in the bottle because if you do it this way, it's completely impossible. If you do it this way, it can be done. If you roll the bottle like this, you'll see it's weighted. See oh, it yeah, 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 yeah. It's impossible to get a balanced bottle, usually. See? Just the way it rolls fast oh as well. Huh? When he did it, Paul turned the heavy side to the bottom, meaning the bottle wouldn't overbalance when it stood upright. But he made sure that every time Liz tried, she started with a heavy side on top, which meant it was sure to topple over no matter how carefully she lifted it. So that's another tenor going from the pocket of a celebrity into the pockets of the hustlers. Remember, it seems too good to be true. Guess what? It is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>this is Brighton Pier, world famous as a visitor attraction with its many amusements and fairground rides. Alex and Jess have come to see if they can get their hands on some tourist cash by setting up their own stall. They're offering prizes ranging from cuddly toys to expensive watches and MP3 players. This is the Lucky Ticket scam. Lucky tickets. Lucky tickets. Lucky to come and play a lucky ticket. Oh, have you won something already? What have you got? What have you won? Oh, adorable. And it cost me a fiver, would it? It's Excellent. a bargain. <laughs> Two pounds for a handful of tickets. Any oh, even number wins. Wins a you prize. Can, I'll do it. Oh, you'll... <laughs> no persuasion needed. These customers each hand over two pounds for ten lucky tickets. I'll take the money. The rules of this game are easy. There's a big bucket and thousands of numbered tickets. Even numbered tickets are losers. Odd numbered tickets are winners. Five winners equals a top of the range MP3 player. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Alex counts out the tickets so they can rip them open and see if they've won. Ten. 
Or the odd ones? Oh. Odd ones are winning. Oh. I'm feeling lucky after my ticket. Yeah. <laughs> are you? 88. 57. Oh. That's an odd. That's a winner. OK, That's we're going to put this over here. Straight away, these guys have picked a winner. In fact, everyone that plays this game immediately has luck on their side. Hey, there's one. So how many odd numbers are in there? Half and half. Even the most suspicious of customers is an instant success. Oh, great. Right. Right. OK. Even. Ah. Oh, odd. Excellent. OK, two. Take on one of those or one of these. So far, so good. Everyone has got themselves a small stuffed toy or a water pistol. That's safe. No one can take that away from them. Even. I think obviously you've got the lucky streak. I have, yeah. <laughs> of course, with the hustlers around, there's no such thing as luck. The odd-even ticket scam is a game you'll find in fairgrounds both here and abroad. It's not always a scam, but when it is, your chances of winning are minute. The reason this works so well is that the operator has got complete control of the game. He can let the marks win or lose any time he wants by palming in winning tickets. The tickets aren't 50% odd and 50% even. In fact, every single ticket in the bucket is actually an even number. They are all losers. The only winning tickets are actually in Alex's pocket. And the only time they enter the game is when he intentionally adds a winner to the pile. That's why he always counts out the tickets before handing them back to the marks. And the instant win is only to get them hooked and make them spend more money. I'll tell you what, I'll let you bank those if you want to have one more go, or a couple more goes. I'll let you put these aside. So if you get five tickets, you win one of these uh, sunglasses. Jewelry. You're halfway there. So how many do we need to get to get one of those? You then? need to get three more. I love it. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, okay. Give me another one. Seeing as they're so close to winning a star prize, the marks keep buying more tickets. Another, another digital camera. Uh, you need to get three more. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. An iPod. I haven't got an iPod. And every so often, they tear open another winning number. You got another odd. Got another odd. Yeah. Okay, two more to go, and you can well, win the. Uh... One more. Oh, one more. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> yeah, yeah, one more go. But just as they get close to winning the big prize. Oh, no. The winning numbers completely dry up. Oh. Aww. You did so well last time. <laughs> <laughs> what are the odds? Three, the odds are four, six, seven. That's the last one. Mm. That's it. Oh, <laughs> guys, you did so you well. <laughs> you get for four. Let me see what you get for four. I'm give you definitely one of these. 70 open tickets, but no star prize. <laughs> Still, they're not walking away empty-handed. They've won themselves a cuddly toy and a plastic water pistol. Total value, 65p. Not a great return for £14. In fact, Alex doesn't let anybody get enough points to win the big prize. But those stuffed toys are absolutely flying off the shelf. It may only be a few quid at a time, but this game can bring in more than £100 an hour. And at that rate, the only winners here are the hustlers. Nice. Have fun with that. <laughs> Bye. Bye. We didn't do overly well. On that nearly. <laughs> nearly. Got, got we four, nearly got it. We got four odds, we needed five to yeah. get like, a watch and all some sunglasses. Which was quite nice, but yeah. no, we set all those on the end. <laughs> <laughs> we needed two more to get an iPod, but we decided to cut our losses because we weren't doing that good <laughs> after all. <laughs> we told the marks that there were never any winning tickets in the bucket. Well, Is that why you counted them? them? Oh, well, who couldn't have done? You gave him... Because we gave him the tickets. We gave him the tickets to count from, though. Games of chance and luck are all great fun, but you should only spend what you can afford. And remember that you're really paying for the entertainment value rather than actually expecting to win anything. If you think a game is crooked, just walk away.